some gifts need some long preparation. In this case it took 10 months and it was a gift to myself, with all tiny things coming together. I built a little sewing nook in the midst of our living room. And I did so because I was annoyed of not having a dedicated space to my projects and all my tools spread all over the flat and now I have them all collected in one space. And I wanted to have a background for my videos so that's why you have already seen some of those elements in my previous videos and now I think the nook is finished because I have added the last thing I had envisioned. I chose the living room as a good place to transform a part into a sewing nook. Since it's the biggest room, has big windows for sunlight and that wall wasn't in use anyway. Still, I had to remove some stuff and also did some sorting of magazines I didn't look in for years. So many were allowed to go. And I tested if I still can sew on both sewing machines once they are placed. Then I made some shelves out of some brackets my sister wasn't using anymore and two wood planks. They weren't exactly straight so I cut them at a straight angle and then sanded them down. I also had to send away those annoying annotations made with colored chalk since I wasn't able to remove them with water. I didn't like the color of the planks so I decided to stain them darker. And this way they would fit the color of my sewing machines even better. And their wood grain would be still visible. These tasks were definitely not ideal to do in the living room, but they were also the only space I had. I also used some furniture as my working bench, but always making sure I don't damage them by placing some cardboard under the clamps. And since I had already created some dust and dirt, I continued with replanting some of my plants while the stain on the shelves was drying. A couple of the plants should end up on the shelves, but in the end some others my grandma had sent me ended up there. Once the shelves were dry, we had to put them onto the wall. I already had checked if there are some cables, so I was sure I could use this wall, but still it was quite a journey to force these holes into the wall. There are some holes and also some we don't need. This building apparently wasn't meant to hang stuff on the wall. But finally we made it work and the shelves were placed. Despite some little change to the placement, but in the end I liked the more irregular placement more. 
with the plans of my grandma came a sewing machine from the 1950s. It was the sewing machine of my great grandma and should be sewing, but right now it is clogged with oil. I will have to clean it and hopefully be able to use it soon again. Another sewing machine enlarged my little collection further. It is an antique children's sewing machine from the 1910s, which was used to teach mostly girls how to sew garments for their dolls. And I really love the technique of this hand crank machine. I also will have to clean this one, but until then it will be placed purely decoratively on my new shelves. The shelves are actually cool for placing some decorative tools and plants, but not so much for holding my actual sewing material. So I bought an antique dresser from the 1900s. It took three months to be delivered due to COVID regulations, but finally it arrived and it, and it fits perfectly to the colors of the other wooden machines, who were already waiting for their companion. I struggled somewhat to place the dresser because I found it lost by it placing it directly to the wall. So now it's occupying the entire corner. And I was finally able to place all my supplies and tools into the many drawers. It is amazing to have all or at least most of the tools all in one place instead of running around and searching for each piece once I want to start a project. I now have a drawer for all my filming stuff, the knitting crocheting needles, the threads and one for all the sewing supplies and there are still some left for other stuff. Now came the one thing which made the sewing look complete for me. I wanted to add a picture of a distant relative in her beautiful garb. And this picture needed a beautiful frame. So I turned to a flea market and eBay and looked for one in the right size. There, at the flea market, I came across a beautiful mirror which I cleaned from those green oxidations with a mix of vinegar, salt and baking powder. Seeing the footage, it's quite remarkable how the gold paint started shining again. Once I was done cleaning, I placed the mirror on the other side of the room so that I may take some fitting footage looking at this beauty. Finding a frame of the size of the picture on the other hand was not that easy. So I chose to buy a smaller one and crop some of the cardboard away. I also think that this was a good decision since now it is easier to place the frame in one of the remaining free spaces. And for the second frame I got, I will find the picture too. Until then it will stand here and occupy the place so that I do not place some random stuff or projects here. Actually, I clutter the space quite a lot with my ongoing projects, but at least this is a nice cluttered space now, right? Don't forget to treat yourself well. Happy holidays!